What's up guys, Cyber Houdini here and welcome back to your daily dose of gaming. It is the 24th of March, baby. We are almost through with this week. Oh my goodness, it is the hump day and the happiest hump days to you. To you. Today we've got some awesome rumors and news, some crazy theories. I'm loving this daily dose. I love it, I love it, I love it. It's, a, it's an awesome way of me to catch up with news and to just discuss it with you guys. And keep it short and sweet. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Even on a busy day like today, we can still get into the news. And with, without further ado, yeah, I always wanted to say that. Without further ado, what is ado? Much ado about nothing. Anyway, first piece of news: big, crazy ass fucking news story right here. Let's see. Let's see if this one actually uh, turns out to be true. A Demon Souls movie is apparently. In the works over at Sony. I, like, I don't know like if this is true or not. It's reported uh, by a giant freaking robot. It's definitely heavy, heavy rumors right now. Uh, the success of the new remake, obviously, has put Sony in a nice, comfortable position. But we'll see. Like, Sony Pictures and, and PlayStation uh, might as well be two separate, completely different companies altogether because they rarely ever get together. Um, they, they are queuing up uh, a lot of new uh, movies and TV shows. Like we, We're all, I think, definitely... Um, very excited for what they're going to do with The Last of Us. Apparently, there's going to be a lot of story changes with that. We'll see how that goes. But the idea of a Demon Souls movie, I can't even begin to feel like, how would this work? Like, just recently, we got um, the Monster Hunter movie with uh, Mila Jovovich and uh, Paul W. Anderson, whatever his name is. Basically, the Resident Evil crew, you know, husband and wife. And I'm hearing okay things about it, but clearly, it's still in that kind of vein, you know? You want to go into that movie thinking... Um, popcorn movie like uh, you know Transformers or something so what would they do with this it's the only thing I can really compare it to like what would you do how do you give it a, a human story you can't really right because your main character has always just been this hollow literally in some cases this hollowed out figure that uh, you yourself put your shoes into you know they barely even have any speaking at all besides the, the usual grunts and that you know so I don't know if they can truly make a story of it. The bosses, the 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 um, atmosphere, like the setting itself, of course that would lend itself very well to a movie. But would it have to be all like CGI? I assume so. I don't know. I know I'm still out of place myself in terms of like Uncanny Valley and that. I'm not that satisfied with CGI where we are with CGI. Like it's definitely come a long way, you know, since the freaking 80s and 90s. But um, it's in some cases, I feel like it's actually worse than then. You know, we look back, we all make our, our jokes and our memes about those action movies from the 90s, the Arnie movies, those Stallone movies, uh, with all the, you know, like the running man and things like that. But they had some really cool effects. And that's what I, that's what I miss. I think if you want to do something like this, you may have to go down the... Um, the practical effects instead of a uh, full-on CGI and I know that sounds crazy as you think of all the the bosses and that we'll see we'll see if all of all this um, Sony properties to make a movie I don't know I don't know if I would have went with that one Ratchet and Clank like technically did get that movie I know they made a lot of cutscenes into the game and it was like it was the closest thing to a game being exactly what the movie was and the movie being exactly what the game was um, it reminded me of those old like early 2000s license games where you really were just playing through the cutscenes from the movie. Anyway, um, look, we'll see, we'll see. For now, it is without a shadow of doubt a, a heavy, heavy rumor. And it's actually made me uh, smile because I'm like, Jesus, could this be real? You know, we'll see. Fucking Demon Souls and Dark Souls as movies. Now this would be. I don't think like if Dark Souls was to be made a movie it wouldn't be done through sony it's just as simple as that the reason why demon souls pops up is because it's sony owned you know we know it's from softwares it was the one that kicked off everything it's a very important game um, and possibly one of the best of all the souls games you know but it's owned by sony it was, it, it, it's such a weird turn of events if they do make a movie out of it because they started at a place where they didn't really represent this game properly you know they went off and, and basically said this from software go and make whatever you want and they came back with demon souls everyone at sony was not a big fan of it and they ended up not publishing it at, at all outside of 
um, Japan. So they basically dropped it like, you know, a hot potato, which was really foolish of them, uh, seeing as where the series was gonna go, you know. I don't think the series hit mainstream until Dark Souls, so going multi-platform was an important part of that, just so more people could see it, but it was still very niche at the time. I think the real thing that really made it explode was the whole idea of, you know, the prepare to die, the hardest game ever, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it took off and then, you know, it just became this runaway success story and it's now one of, uh, one of the coolest things in video games that whole series the whole idea of souls like and that i love it anyway we'll see where this goes i'll keep an eye on this for now heavy heavy rumor but demon souls movie wow even just saying it sounds ridiculous but we'll, we'll see we'll see how things are going all right on to the next piece of news we have a little update which i thought was really cool um hold on, i have to blow this up um just from people who are basically in the alpha test for uh, new xbox updates uh they basically said that it looks like they're already testing out um, these games not needing gold for multiplayer or party chat, which is great, which is great. Starting off with uh, Left 4 Dead, I believe it was. People have been playing Left 4 Dead um, without gold um, and been able to be in party chat and multiplayer without gold. So that's pretty cool. It's a long ass time coming, but if I was to be a betting man, this is definitely uh, Xbox testing those waters. They want people to come over to Game Pass. Does that mean that they may end up like making gold uh, free possibly possibly because game pass in and of itself is a far more attractive package than what we're so used to with you know paying to play games like already we know that uh, free to play games are going to be finally you know actually free to play on on xbox which is which is nice as well you know but they're so so far behind you know if i yeah if i was a betting man i'd say that's what they're going to do and i'd also say that they'll use the idea of, you know, making multiplayer free as a big uh, market employee, you know. Xbox, right now, where they're standing, they c can do no wrong, you know. They still are not supplying us with enough of the first party stuff. But when I look down the pipeline, I am more excited for what's coming for Xbox, you know. Um, with everything from Bethesda Studios, uh, Hellblade 2, uh, everything that um, Obsidian have been doing, you know, between like Outer Worlds 2 maybe... Um, Avowed, which I call Abowed, just because of the weird font. It was, it's a funny running joke, and I'm going to call it Abowed. But it looks, it looks really cool. I want to see what Compulsion do next. That's the guys behind um, We Happy Few, that, that crazy, like, uh, happy pill uh, set in the 60s type game. It was, it was really cool. The Joy Pill. It's a cool game. I'd like to see where they go from that. Obviously, we got Fable as well. Forza is going to keep doing its thing. Maybe, like, rumors are maybe the next Forza goes to Japan. We'll see. We'll see. I think it's going to be a big E3 for Xbox. It's about time, right? They've been definitely holding back um, for a long time. Now, Sony, obviously, are not going to go to sleep or anything like that. It's just in terms of beyond um, Horizon 2 and, and God of War Ragnarok, uh, you kind of start to ask yourself, what is in the pipeline? But that's where um, you start to see the other studios, you know, really um, basically fire their second shot, you know, in, in a massive, a massive revolver first of, of, of first party titles, you know, like maybe what, what Sony Ben do next after Days Gone or something like that. You know, you never know. You never know. There's rumors galore about uh, what Naughty Dog is up to as well. So that's cool. Just a nice little tidbit there. And speaking of um, uh, future games and that. Hello, how's it going, Dutch? Hello, hello, hello. We have the future game show coming up, which is basically the PC version of E3. Now, I was saying about this before. Usually all this stuff goes on around June. But it's clear with uh, all the other um, publishers that everybody has just been firing off a lot of their conferences and that. Uh, in March, just a little sneak peek, the first kind of look at what's to come in 2021. And a lot of the bigger games were pushed uh, to May, you know. May is absolutely stacked. Resident Evil 8 and that, you know. Brandon Doom Eternal Nightmare. Oh, man, you are you are God. You are a Doom God. Streaming it too. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Hell yeah, dude. Kick some ass. So, the, this is going on tomorrow, this future game show. Um, they, I think they are doing a little stream around it, and they're supposed to be showing off 40 new games. Now, there is a small rumor going around that they may be showing off a new Sonic game for any new uh, Sonic fans out there. You know, I know it's been a minute. He has an anniversary coming up, so it would be nice, you know. Uh, Sonic has definitely fallen a lot, stumbled. He gets himself back up and puts out a, a, a new game, and then another four bad ones. 
But uh, I'd still like to see where things go. They're going to be hosted by um, the voices behind Jill and Carlos from Resident Evil uh, 3 Remake. So I wonder, is that like a nod to maybe they're going to put some of them games, um, you know, somewhere? I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, 40 games is a lot. Looks like um, uh, Digital Revolver will be there as well, which is really cool. But yeah, a lot, a lot of publishers, EA, Sega, Warner Brothers. So, someone spelled it Water Brothers. Good Lord. Good Lord. Someone spell check, please. Take him. Water Brothers. That sounds funny. It's like Mario Brothers, but it's the rivals of Mario Brothers because they're plumbers and they got to block the water. So it's the Water Brothers. There you go, Nintendo. You got a free one right there. And Team 17, of course, who we know from Worms, but, um, you know, in the last good few years, they've become quite the indie publisher, and uh, big ups to them, for sure. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited for that. Um, it's kind of snuck up on me. Uh, we'll be reporting on whatever happens uh, tomorrow with that. But yeah, uh, 40 games, that's that's awesome. There's, there's rumors going around all over about what the game's going to be. I think maybe we might see more from the new Lord of the Rings Gollum game. Um, like I said, maybe a new Sonic game. Yeah, just stuff like that, you know. I would expect a nice, healthy dose of indie games, but in a world where we've got indie games like uh, Phasmophobia and Valheim and um, Hades, like, do not sleep on these indie games. They are they are the games that keep us going, for sure. They are the heart of the industry, for sure. And you never know what's going to come next. Anyway, so that's the future game show. Keep scrolling down. We're just going to... It looks like it's on a quarter to ten. My time GMT. Okay, well, we'll see, we'll see how things go. Maybe I'll, I'll stream it. Pretty damn cool. Alright, for some reason, it's just that future game show logo makes me think Doritos or Mountain Dew. They need to switch that up. Alright, now for a, a crazy little bit of news. Any Genshin Impact fans over there? It definitely is Breath of the Waifu or a Waifu of the Wild, whatever you want to call it. But it has um, been a phenomenon for sure. It is uh, probably one of the most successful and healthiest free-to-play games ever it's a, it's a game that was first compared to obviously breath of the wild hence where it was coming up with those little names but uh clearly once people saw the combat it was clear that um it is far and away from anything like breath of the wild altogether and um, the closest thing they copy is probably just a little stamina circle beside the character but uh, yeah like uh, it's it's free to play like i said and it's doing absolutely crazy numbers it's huge in in all around the world but especially in the asian markets and it's already sold one billion dollars worth of microtransactions on mobile in less than six months like if you oh my god if you want to talk about the, like the 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 market of mobile games like holy mother of christ and they've even broken down like uh, how much character revenue has has brought in you know it's crazy. Now, I, I, I've downloaded this. It's only like 9 gigs. And super fun. And I know it does get grindy, hence why they're raking in so much money. But it's uh, all optional, of course. But you don't can't tell that to these whales. You can't. You can't. But um, yeah, if you if we go down here, it's still, at the end of the day, even at, at, at a billion, you know, um, it's still quite small compared to the juggernauts of mobile, including Pokemon Go and Clash Royale still going fucking insane there. My God. I am still very much like a um, console pleb, so mobile gaming is uh, a foreign a foreign thing to me. I didn't even play Pokemon Go. I could not understand it at all, but it was a huge phenomenon for a lot of people. And then it just became dangerous because people were breaking into other people's properties and that. What are you doing in my house, son? I'm trying to get Jigglypuff. Fuck a Jigglypuff. No, please no Genshin. You're not a big fan of Genshin? Oh. It's still nice that it's a free-to-play game. I, I can't say nothing but good things about that, you know? Might not be your cup of tea. Might not be a big fan of anime and that. It's hard to get away from it. I, I know what you mean, though. Like, um, unfortunately, thanks to social media, you can't move too far without bumping into some fandom from something, you know? Whether it's K-pop stands making everyone's life uh, a living hell, including the K-pops they're actually standing to. Or, uh, yes, the an anime weebs, for sure. But yeah, I still I still gotta give it to them for uh, what an impressive impressive free to play game, very cool. It's, it's closer to just a giant RPG decided to just give away for free. When you think free to play, you think oh god, oh god. Yeah, anyway, but there you go. Like there's the breakdown of each of the characters as well. I have no idea who these are. As far as I know, I think this Hu Tao one is a, a new one, and a lot of people. Well, I think you roll to try and get the new character, and it costs actual money to keep re-rolling that usual stuff. So it's obviously bringing in an unbelievable amount of revenue. 
So it's clear to say that other uh, developers will probably try this route. We'll see. Well, when it comes to microtransactions, they're definitely a necessary evil. We hate them. We do, we do. Um, but it's always optional, you know. Alright, next up, uh, a, a cool little game that's coming out from the makers of A Way Out is called It Takes Two. It's a, it's a cute little storybook game. And uh, the reviews are just in. And it's doing really, really well. I'm so happy. Let me just load up a trailer first. I'm so happy that it's doing well. This, yeah, this is from the guys who made uh, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons and um, A Way Out. Now, they said that they haven't seen uh, as good a, a co-op game since Portal 2. Like, god damn, that's over at Games Beat. That's a hell, a hell of a good recommendation. Portal 2, one of the greatest games of all time. This one looks cool. If you're a big fan of, like, Little Big Planet and um, other kind of games like that, then I highly suggest It Takes Two. It's coming out pretty soon. It's another one of those kind of very unique uh, style co-op games where you, you should be able to see both sides. Look, it says it's it's in that resolution when clearly it's not. So yeah, you'll be able to see both sides at the same time. It's really cute. And one I wouldn't mind half playing myself, for sure. Do, do, do. Yeah, character models still a, a little bit rough around the edges. A Way Out was one of those uh, little surprise hits. It really did a great job. A little bank robbery game, but just having that extra element of being able to see both sides and it just created this whole dynamic and it's one of those games that was, you know, really fun to stream and, and, and just, you know, have a bit of fun with a friend. And this, I could definitely see this being like their Team B game, you know, while they work on their next big huge game. And this is the kind of thing, and this is gorgeous, like look, and you can only imagine how well it's going to look on like PC and the, the new gen consoles. My goodness. I like the whole aesthetic of it, I could easily, easily see this being turned into a movie. Good for them. That's It Takes Two. Hell yes. Well done. Well done. All right. Next up, uh, let's see. We have... I, I actually uh, talked about this uh, a good while ago. But it's basically what GameStop plans to do in the future. Whether it'll happen or not, I don't know. But uh, there have been talks to try and, try and save this company somehow. And um, what they want to do is basically turn it into a PC parts like uh, sales shop you know that kind of way you go in and you you build your pc and game stuff it sounds kind of crazy but i had seen some uh, rumored like concept sketches of what they want to turn the stores into and basically they want to like have a whole like hangout area a place to demo and build your pc that kind of stuff and we know they're struggling uh, i know that uh they're probably still not really long for this world after the whole crazy gamestop stock uh craze that happened um unfortunately everybody like got the fuck out of there a lot of people did you know and they sold as quick as they could and that ends up with um them losing a shitload of money uh, and uh, you know at the end of the day gamestop is definitely the most evil of all you know that it, it killed a lot of mom and pop stores over the years so it wouldn't be a great loss if they went away you know but most people's gripe with them is like oh i only got seven dollars for a brand new game or, or shit like that that's yeah they've definitely been um you know horrible when it comes to that kind of stuff especially when you have a uh, cex which do things so much better and and seem to be able to keep the lights on without screwing over your customers so it's a funny one me uh, coming from a smaller country, GameStop is kind of the only GameStop we have besides CEX. A lot of the smaller ones are gone. We don't have game that's uh, UK exclusive and that. Um, yeah, but I know I, I know a lot of people would agree with me that I think that it was better when there were e, EB Games. We had EB Games here, Electronics Boutique. They were cool. But yeah, I mean, in a world where I, I don't think even now mom and pop's game store uh, game stores could could survive like i see a lot of places in america where it's kind of like more of a collector's store you know and they also sell games but they're always doing other things you know i've seen a lot of stores pop up and they'll do like the figurines the board games anything they can i even got to the point where gamestop were selling so much fucking mer merch that it was just taking over the store so yeah it's one of those things where you hate to see them go but kind of like fuck the loss as well like, let them go, but it will, you know, it's kind of the only place we got left as well. Because, as much as you might say, GameStop has, um, you know, cannibalized a lot of the other stores, and it's very true, they have. We're living in a, a constant, like, more digital age. Um, 
you know, and I'm not the biggest fan of Amazon because I don't get my games on time, no matter how much I pre-order. And with Brexit as well, it's made it a holy, holy show. I'm better off to now go to like um, Amazon Germany or something just to get away from going through UK at all. It's gone that bad. And it really is. It's not even the import charges that are killing me. It's the constant uh, things being just held up in uh, customs forever. For um, So when Little Nightmares came out, I had pre-ordered that before the date. I didn't get that three weeks later. I ain't even joking. I couldn't find it. I don't know what the fuck happened. Now, that might be just one little situation, but sure as hell didn't feel like that. Anyway, so yeah, we'll see We'll see what happens. GameStop definitely clawing on to their last little remnants. Let's see where it goes. All right, next up is a, a very cool little bit of news. I love when this happens. It's just out of nowhere. Uh, Sirius Sam 2 has gotten a brand new update 15 years after it came out. 15 years. Now, recently... Uh, over the last, about six months ago, uh, they, they brought out uh, Serious Sam 4. Serious Sam games are just good, good old-fashioned FPS fun. If you're a fan of Doom, Duke Nukem and that, hell yeah. Serious Sam is no slouch. They're, they're good fun. Nice little bit of, um, you know, um, silly humor as well, you know. Uh, but it was really cool that they did this as well. 15 years after come out, they, and it's a hefty update as well, you know. I know those graphics aren't a whole lot to look at, but... That's uh, how old the game is. I think they're all on sale as well. This is just the Steam page. It's really cool. It's been 5 billion years since the last proper update. <laughs> Maybe not that far, but damn. 12 brand new multiplayer maps. Wow. Good God. Good for them. Dual wielding, enemy multiplayer, new weapons. Yeah, and 12. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Good for them. Good for them. I think they're all on sale. So if you're a fan of those, it'd be a good time to pick them all up. Hell yes. My god. I, I see this pop up from time to time. It's like, this game got a massive update. I don't even mean like a remaster. We'll just go back and update things. I like it. It feels... That's the type of thing I love to see developers doing. Because it shows that they care about their legacy as well. I mean, most devs do. But it's you got to wrestle with fucking CEOs and that. Like, this obviously costs uh, money and time. Pretty damn cool. Pretty damn cool. Alright, uh, and also a nice bit of news I just saw there as well, that uh, Watch Dogs Legion has a free trial. If you guys were uh, on the fence about this game, I know a lot of people were, as was I. I just went in anyway, because that's how I do it. Um, but yeah, it's nice that it gets a free trial. It just so happens to coincide with the multiplayer uh, released, and I think, uh, on Xbox and a couple others. So there you go. You're going to be able to play the single player and the... Um, the multiplayer as well from the march 25th which is uh tomorrow uh, all the way to the 29th pretty much on all platform ps4 ps5 xbox one series x epic ubisoft connect all that good stuff now this kind of stuff i i still feel like it just tries to drum up interest so people will buy the game and that i still feel like if you release a demo or a free trial of a game if people finish it they should automatically be given like a token to get like 10 percent off the game or something because there's never really an incentive to buy the game afterwards, except that you enjoyed the demo. Most people will tell you, I enjoyed the demo so much, I played the demo again. And that's as far as they go. But if you give them a little incentive, even 10% off, I know it's not much. But it's like a free 5 bucks for finishing a demo. It's easy. Easy. But anyway, don't listen to me. I'm, I'm just giving you free ideas. Free business ideas. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty cool. I, I still think... This is kind of one of those, they're still trying to bring uh, any kind of hype back for Watch Dogs. Um, but I do think that Ubisoft will be going on the game uh, pass uh, soon. So, you know, it's kind of like a little bit too little too late. But it is what it is. They ran into a lot of bugs. Everything got delayed. The usual stuff. That's what happens when you release three open world games in three months impossible bernie how's it going dude hello 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 did you get any wins in there uh, fall guys i hope you're doing well you should get to play a little bit of Watch Dogs, seeing as it's uh go, go doing a little free weekend all right it's going well you did get some wins nice 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 What's your most successful, like, um, uh, end 
end game. What's your most successful final game? Nice little bit of news there. Valve announcing Steam Next Fest that's going to happen during E3, 16th to the 22nd of June. That's nice too. I'd say like Valve are very, very pleased with the reception and of course the sales of Half-Life Alex. So they've been already in talks of possibly going further with that. Um, yeah, I, I still think it's one of the most impressive and closest to a, and a full actual, you know, Half-Life 3 and a full VR game. I feel like most VR games are a little bit shorter, you know, um, because of uh, how much the player can stay in VR, basically. You always feel like it's a little bit, not watered down, but just a little bit shorter version. It's not always the case. I feel like Resident Evil 7 and uh, Half-Life Alex, they're, they're big games. I want to see more of that. Otherwise, everything feels like a, a tech demo. But that's cool. So, yeah. It's the new name for the semi-regular Steam Game Festival. I got a Eurogamer reporting on this. Very good. I'm glad. Just more games, more news. We're already starting to get that little trickle of excitement getting ready for E3. Even though we know it's going to be a little bit different uh, this year as it was last year. But instead of it being spread over uh, three months like it was last year, I believe they're trying to... Uh, get it all together for one month so maybe the whole of june i think that'd be a better idea because it's not as if we ever ran out of news because we didn't um but we'll see maybe just june and july i don't know at the end of the day these publishers and these developers they just want that you know moment in the sun and sometimes believe it or not i know a lot of eyes are on e3 sometimes it's not the best time to announce your game because you were wrestling with 20 other video games and it gets lost in the shuffle sometimes. So, you know, see how it goes. I'm hyped as hell. Thin Ice, yeah, Thin Ice is... Did you play that game where it was just three Thin Ices? I ended up getting like five uh, crowns. I didn't get them back to back. I got two back to back, Bernie. Then I got really, really nervous on the next one and died. Because I was trying to go for that trophy of five in a row. But that one where you just do three rounds of Thin Ice back to back... Really fun, really, really fun. Easy, easy crowns for sure. It's people that have hundreds and hundreds of crowns. I don't know how to do it. I must play it on PC and see is the is the lag improved. You got two crowns, yeah, dude. Because even playing it on PS5, it has kind of smoothed it up a little bit. But uh, it's clear that um, you're just not gonna have that reaction time that you do with mouse and keyboard. It's one to one, whereas controller, it's always like even if it's 0 0.0 of a millisecond, it's enough. It's enough. Anyway. Yeah, so I think that's all the news for today. Um, not not too busy a day. Like, uh, I was actually busy myself. When I got back in, I was expecting some, to have missed something. I'm usually late to the party. But, uh, no. Nothing too much. We did talk about a, a possible Demon Souls movie, which is mad. Uh, we talked about Xbox Live Gold. Basically, slowly, be, uh, you know, the, the entry to play multiplayer games and party chat become a thing of the past. People have already tried out Left 4 Dead, and it's uh, free without gold, basically, which is awesome. So we'll see where that goes. Um, yeah, that's, I, I would definitely see gold disappear in the future and then really just go full heart into um, Game Pass. I mean, Game Pass Ultimate has everything anyway. So, yeah, it's just it'd be a nice marketing tool for them just to go, boom, we've got free multiplayer. It's something that the PS3 was able to use. Hell yes. Uh, then we talked about the future game show, which is tomorrow. It's like a, a little PC stream, uh, but it'll show off a lot of uh, games. Over 40 games, one of them rumors being of a new Sonic game, but we'll see. I know you might say, why are you announced it at a PC game show? Most of them just want somewhere big to announce their game. Yeah, so it was good. That, that is uh, today's Daily Dose of Gaming. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate that. Hell yes. We're getting closer to the weekend, baby. Enjoy your hump day.